presentation and good afternoon everybody. Uh, I must add a disclaimer to the bio you wrote about me. Uh, the disclaimer is that I'm not a lawyer, I don't have a legal background and I feel very lonely in this room because I understand that everybody is very much into the field. And indeed, uh, the discussion that we had so far was concentrated on legal issues, legal arguments, while my contribution is rather focused on the needs and the expectations of the users of medicines, those who are most affected by modern settlements, and yet, as, uh, as you said, Professor Lee, they are those who are not sitting at the table. And before, uh, before I continue, just a few words about uh, my organization. Uh, PEUC uh, stands for the European Consumer Organization, and uh, since uh, 1962, uh, our role has been to promote and defend consumer interests and rights in the formulation of policies at European level. And our job is to make sure that consumer voice is heard in the different debates that affect uh, consumer daily life. In the area of pharmaceuticals, we work very closely with the European Medicine Agency in London. We are involved in various its activities uh, via different scientific committees. And the European Court of Justice just granted their colleague to intervene in the cases brought against the European Medicine Agency uh, by uh, AVI and Intermune in relation to the European Medicine Agency transparency policy. Uh, no need to say that uh, we stand as the European Medicine Agency for transparency, so we are intervening in support of the European Medicine Agency. We also uh, follow very closely the debate uh, at European level uh, in relation to legislation uh, on pharmaceuticals that uh, yet affect uh, consumers, uh, namely uh, the clinical trials regulation, uh, the legislation on counterfeit medicine, uh, the legislation on uh, pharmacovigilance, and the one on information to patients, which uh, now the Commission announced will withdraw. We were also involved and we provided input and comments uh, to the pharmaceutical sector inquiry that was referred before. Uh, what is the consumer perspective in this debate? Uh, first of all, uh, we consider that medicines are not like any other good. They're not cars, uh, they're not candies, uh, because they are tested on human beings and because they save lives. They can also have serious side effects, that's why uh, no candies. And so this, this specialty, this difference compared to other products should be taken into account in the discussion about patents. Our baseline is that consumers, all European consumers, have the right to safe, affordable and innovative medicine. And in the time of economic crisis, the word affordable is of course key, because we observe our, and our members tell us that many consumers are struggling now to access uh, basic medicines in some countries. Another point which is very important for us in all sectors, but in particular in the healthcare sector, is that consumers can make informed decisions. And when it comes to um, generic entry to the market, we observe that this is delayed not only because of public settlements, but also because there are sometimes misinformation campaigns on generics, on their quality, by competitors, even if uh, we recently uh, agreed together with other stakeholders on common principle for edits uh, in the pharmaceutical sector and companies committed not to make misinformation campaigns about the quality and safety of competitors' products. So I hope it's a, good, it's, a, it's a good start to, to not to have these campaigns anymore. But also there is another problem which is consumer perception about generic medicine. Sometimes generics are perceived of, uh, as products of lesser quality because maybe they are produced uh, outside Europe and we don't know, uh, we don't have evidence about this and this perception is sometimes not accurate. So these, uh, all these elements uh, are um, to be taken into account when uh, looking at uh, generic entry into the market. While focusing on uh, uh, competition, on IPR and more legal issues, we from the consumer perspective observe, first of all, that there are too many too me drugs. Uh, I'm sure that you all know what to me, me too drugs mean. Uh, medicine that do not bring an added therapeutic value to consumers, yet they expose them to unnecessary risk because maybe there is an alternative medicine already on the market which has been tested for a longer period of time. Now we have also cases of uh, not me drugs. Uh, I don't know if you are aware, but the Italian antitrust authorities are investigating a case uh, of um, two medicines uh, to treat uh, macular degeneration and a potential um, agreement between two companies uh, to avoid the, the use of one of these medicines, so that's not me. And we also observe uh, an extensive interpretation of what is considered commercially confidential. 
a few weeks ago, uh, a senior representative of a pharmaceutical <coughs> company said that also side effect information should be considered commercially confidential. Of course, we don't think this is in the interest of consumers, and um, that is how, how we see this, this point. <coughs> so the, the recommendation from our side to, to pharmaceutical companies is to, to adopt a more ethical approach towards uh, patent settlement in general, and to, uh, to be more transparent uh, in the interest of consumers, to regain consumer trust. We, uh, I know you are, many of you are, are lawyers or potential lawyers, uh, but uh, if we would have to uh, recommend something to the pharmaceutical company would be to spend less in lawyers and, and less in uh, promotion, in marketing, and more on research and development, because we think that competitive industries have to respond to the needs of consumers uh, to be competitive and avoid uh, you know, unnecessary spending, especially in this time of economic crisis. So this is the key message from, from our side today, I think. Of course, we ask uh, policymakers to provide regulators, but also consumers, with the tools to uh, defend their rights, in the, in the case of consumers, and uh, we ask policymakers to provide the competent authorities more resources to make sure that the legislation is enforced in the interest of consumers. And I must say that we are always surprised to see that also when fines are imposed, they don't make such a difference, but at least they don't make the difference we would expect, even if they are significant, especially in the US. And it seems to me that they're just a cost of doing business. So I would, happy to, I would be happy to hear views from the audience about the amount of fines and their dissuasive uh, uh, role. Uh, to conclude uh, very briefly on the question that uh, I've been asked to address, uh, are patent settlement anti-competitive? Uh, I, I know that the, the lawyers, the manufacturers, the judges are discussing and uh, the views are, um, are different. Uh, the views from the consumer perspective is unanimous. Uh, we think they are anti-competitive, but most of all that they're not ethical because they are consumers, they are a system, and because we think that the money spent on patent settlement could be better spent in uh, producing medicine that, uh, that save lives and that respond to the needs of, of those who need the most. Uh, thank you.